Hi, my name is Eduardo Ox, uh, and the title of this talk is Rapples in Strange Places, Lua, LaTeX, LPEG, LPEG Rex, and Tix. Uh, I'm the author of an MX package called the EV, and this is a, a talk at the MXConf 2023 that is happening in December 2023 at the Internet. And this is one of the examples of diagrams that, I, that we are going to see. Let me show how I generate it. Uh, one second. I have to use a smaller font here. Uh, <coughs> this is a file called parse32.lua. Let me go back to this block of tests again. And now if I run this, uh, we get these outputs here at the right. And then in this line here, it generates a PDF. And if I type F8 here, it shows the PDF in the lower lower right window. Uh, let me start by explaining briefly what is EEV. Uh, first, uh, it's something that appeared by accident in the mid-90s. I explained this, this story in my presentation at the MXConf 2019. Uh, it's a package, it's an MX, an MX package that is part of Elpa. It has at least 10 users. Uh, <coughs> Those are the ones that I know by name. Uh, EV means max execute verbosely. Uh, EV is something that treats eval last sex as the central feature of a max. Uh, EV blurs the distinction between programmers and users, and it replaces the slogan "users should not be forced to see Lisp." That is something that Richard Stallman told me once. By users should see Lisp instead of buttons. And new users should see Lisp in the first five minutes. Uh, I'm going to show, to show some, some examples of that soon. Uh, EV uses code in comments a lot and also tests in comments. Uh, I changed my way of presenting it and it became very REPL centric in, in the last few years in the sense that I start by explaining its, my, its main features by its su support by, uh, for REPLs. Uh, if you suppose that, that we want to keep executable nodes of everything, I'm also going to show examples of this in a second. Uh, if it has lots of videos for people who hate videos, and it tries to do everything with very little magic and without black boxes. I'm going to explain many of these things very soon. Uh, this is a figure that, that I'm going to uh, to show in details soon that it's about something important about Lua. Oops, the font is very bad now, so let me change the font. The figure is this one. And uh, <coughs> what most people do when they, when they visit a file with, with something interesting on it is that they just go there and they set a bookmark there or they put the position in a register. In a register. Uh, but I... Uh, I prefer to, to keep links to everything that is interesting as Elise Piper links. So, for example, this is an Elise Piper link to a to file that goes to this anchor here and to this string after this anchor. Uh, this is a variant that opens that, that file in the window at the right here. Uh, and this is... Uh, <coughs> A sex that change, changes the font. I have a, a, a command with a very short names that, name that does that, but but I prefer prefer to keep that as a uh, one liner. Uh, about the videos, uh, we can see the list of fir first class videos of EV by executing this meta x first find first class videos or by running this alias here meta x one c, and then what we see is this. Uh, the first uh, sex here regenerates this buffer, so we can make a mess here and then run this and the original buffer is regenerated again in a clean way. Uh, each of these things here uh, opens a buffer with information about a video. Uh, let me take a specific example here. Uh, this video here is about one of the ancestors of this talk that is a library that I wrote for uh, creating diagrams in LaTeX using a package called PICT2E. 
uh, using REPLs. Anyway, uh, the thing is that if we run uh, a sex like this one, and we don't have a, a local copy of the video, if you will try to load to the local copy, and instead of doing that and by asking something like, do you want to, do you want me to download the local copy, blah, 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 uh, it simply opens a buffer like this. I mean, if the, if we don't have a local copy yet, it will open a buffer like this one, in which uh, these things here in comments are links to the documentation. I mean, uh, this thing here explains the idea of local file, local copies of files from the internet. Uh, there are more details here and here. And uh, this is a script that we can ex execute line by line. So instead of this script being hidden behind the button that we just uh, press after a question like, do you want me to do something, blah, 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 yes or no? Uh, the script is visible here, and we can execute it step by step. It creates uh, a terminal with a, with a shell here in the right window, and uh, when we type F8 in, one of, in these lines here, the lines are sent to this line. Uh, so this is going to uh, download a copy of the video. The wget says that I already have a copy of the video in its subtitles, and so on. And after uh, getting the co a copy of the video, we can uh, run this XP here and it plays the video. Uh, I said that EV has lots of videos for people who hate videos. And the idea is that very few, very few people are going to watch the videos in real time. Uh, and most of the people that I know, or most of the, peop that, the people that are interested in EV in some way, they are going to to watch just small sections of the video and most of the time they're just going to read the subtitles of the video. Uh, so for each one of the videos we have a page uh, about the video. Let me see if I, have, if I have internet here. Yes, this is a page. And uh, usually these pages have a a link to another page, the page that I ha that have, that has all the subtitles of the video, uh, wherever. In this one, it's not so so visible. But anyway, there are several ways of accessing the subtitles of the video, and one of the ways is by running this exp here. That opens a file in Lua that is what I use to generate the subtitles. Anyway. Uh, by the way, this things, uh, each one of these things here is a hyperlink to a position of the video. So if I type this, the right way. it yeah. goes to that position. Anyway, let me go back. Uh, also, the tutorials of EV, the intros of EV, that start with find and end with intro, they have lots of blocks that say video links, like this one, and these blocks have links to the positions in videos, and if we don't have a local copy of the video yet, it the thing shows us a script that lets us download the local copy. Uh, anyway, I said that I was going to explain what I mean by uh, magic and black boxes. Uh, this is something that I've been trying to explain for a long time, and I think that I got a, a, a very good explanation about, about that in a video that I made about something called EVWconfig, that is a tool for configuring uh, EV on Windows without magic, without buttons that do things without explaining what they are doing. Uh, this is a, a part of the subtitles of the video, let me read that. Uh, AV is an, uh, EVWconfig is an attempt to solve the problem of how to install these things on Windows, both without magic and with very little magic. Uh, remember this slogan, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Here in this video, I'm going to use the term magic as a shorthand for sufficiently advanced technology. That is, something that is complex and non-obvious, 
and that is indistinguishable from magic in the sense of being almost impossible to understand. And I'm also going to use the term, the term black box as a near synonym for magic. And sometimes the term black, the term black box is more convenient, even though it's a bit longer, it has, it has more letters, because when I use the term black box, it invites us to use ex expressions like opening the black box. And I'm going to use that, that expression a lot. Uh, now, let me try to explain what is... Sorry, let me uh, <laughs> change the font. Uh, what is Lua? Uh, Lua is a minimalis minimalistic language in the sense of battery is not included. Uh, it uses associative tables for most of its data structures. Uh, and it's so minimalistic that it's the default print function when we tell, when we uh, create an associative table and we ask it to print, uh, we ask print to, to print an associative table, it just prints the address of the table. Here are some examples. Uh, here is a table, and when we ask to print to print it, it just says that it's the table at this address here. Uh, so, one of the things that, that most people do when they start using Lua is that either they download a package with a pretty printing function or they write their own pretty printing functions. My own pretty printing function is called pp with uppercase letters and it works like this. <coughs> and it prints uh, associative tables in a way like this. It says that uh, for the key 1, the, the value associated to it is 2. For the key 2, the value is 3. And for the key 3, the value is 5. Uh, uh, when I started using Lua, one of my favorite languages was also a language that used associative tables a lot. It was called Icon. Uh, and I had to write my, my own pretty printing functions for icon. So uh, I just had to port my, my pretty printing functions to, uh, to Lua. And my first version looked at something like this. It just had some, some global functions, lots of them actually. Uh, and after a while, I rewrote it and then I rewrote it again and again and again. And this is one of the, the versions of that is not even the default at this point. Uh, <laughs> TOS is for to string. Uh, <clears throat> and this is a demo. Uh, it's very modular, so it's easy to replace parts of it or to toggle flags. And this is an example. If I uh, try to print the table of methods for a certain class, uh, I'll need a smaller font, uh, it prints the table like this, with the names of the methods, and then links to the, to the source code of the functions. Uh, these links only make sense in, in MX and in EV. And when we, we run a link like this one, uh, it shows the source code in the window at the right. So for some functions in source code, this three lines. For other ones, it's one line and whatever. Anyway, let me go back. Uh, Lua can be used in many different styles. Most people hate other people's styles. Uh, when I started using it in uh, the year 2000, I learned most of the basic language in a single day. It was very similar to things that I was already using. And then uh, I rewrote the the mini language that I use that I was using to generate my the HTML from for my pages in Lua. Actually, I had to rewrite it many times, but the first version I certainly did in my first weeks or first months using Lua. Uh, in the beginning, I was just using it for writing programs that either didn't take any, any input at all because the input was already in the source file or that uh, worked as a uh, Unix function, the uh, Unix, Unix programs that would read files and process these files in some way and output something. Uh, <coughs> I mentioned the basic language here. I only learned how to use closures, meta tables, and coroutines many years later. 
uh, in the in the beginning, when I started using Lua, it didn't have a package manager. It appeared later. It is called Lua Rocks. Uh, it has had this package manage, manager for several years. Uh, most of the rocks for Lua Rocks are poorly document and, documented and hacker unfriendly. So you can't rely just on, on the documentation and you can't rely just on the source code because uh, I mean, if you are a genius, you co of course you can, but for people who are either lazy or dumb or whatever, like me, or unfocused, uh, the source code is har hard to understand and hard to tinker with. Uh, some rocks are excellent. The best rocks are well, document well documented, but they are hacker unfriendly, in the sense that I hope that I'll be able to explain soon. Uh, the best rocks use uh, local variables and meta tables a lot. So if you are a beginning, a beginner learning Lua, you're not going to understand what their source code do. They use lots of lots of dirty tricks. Uh, let me talk a bit about object orientation in Lua. It can be done in many ways. Uh, the main book about Lua called Programming in Lua by one of the authors of the language, uh, Roberto Yerzalimshi, uh, presents several ways of doing object orientation in Lua. I hated uh, all of these ways, and also the ways that I tried from, from the rocks. Uh, and then I uh, wrote my own way of doing object orientation in Lua. It's very minimalistic. It's in this file here, eoo.lua. Uh, the main code is just these five lines here. And here's an example of how it works. Here we define a class vector uh, with some meta methods. This meta method here will uh, tell Lua what to do when the user asks to, to add two vectors. This one here tells Lua what to do when the user tells asks Lua to convert a vector to a string and whatever. This one is something that I'm going to explain in a second. So here we create a vector with these coordinates 3 and 4. Here we create another vector. If we print here, then Lua uses the function here in the toString. If we add two vectors, it uses the function here in the add meta method. And if we run the method norm, it is defined here in the uh, table index. Anyway. Uh, <coughs> Uh, uh, even this thing being so small, I used to forget how it's in, in odds worked all the time. Actually, I always forget well, how things work and I have to remember them somehow. And I have to have to have tricks for remembering and tricks for summarizing things and diagrams and so on. And every time that I forgot how this thing worked, I uh, went back to the source code and then I looked at the diagrams or, of course, in the, in the first time like I had to draw the diagrams and uh, I run the examples. And, of course, in the, in the beginning I thought that the code was clear, so my examples were very brief and so I had to rewrite the examples many times until they became, let's say, perfect. Uh, <coughs> I was saying that Lua can be used in many ways, and in my way of using Lua, <coughs> my favorite way, everything can be inspected and modified from, modified from REPLs, uh, like uh, we can do in a Max and in Smalltalk, or sort of. So, in my favorite way of using Lua, there's no security at all, everything can be changed uh, uh, at all times. Uh, of course, most people hate that. My init file has lots of classes. And by the way, instead of keeping many small files with, with many things, I, I put lots of lots of sub stuff in just one big init file. Uh, my init file has lots of crash, uh, classes and lots of global functions and lots of crafts, so people hate that, hate that, hate that of course. Uh, this, this is an example. This is the index at the top of my init file. <coughs> The classes start here, and then we have some functions, and then we have 
functions that load certain packages, and then we have craft, whatever. Uh, most people think that my style of using Lua is dirty and dangerous, and they wouldn't touch my Lua code with, with a 10 feet pole. Uh, but most of the things that I'm going to present here in this presentation are ideas that should be easy to port to other environments and other languages, especially the diagrams. So the code is not so important. Uh, now let me talk a bit about LaTeX, Lua LaTeX, that is LaTeX with, uh, with the Lua interpreter embedded inside, and two ways of generating uh, pictures in LaTeX. Tix, that is very famous, and Pic2E, that is not very famous and that is very low level, and I think that not much, not many people use. Uh, I said before that uh, when I learned Lua, I realized that it was uh, very good for writing little languages. Uh, I was doing my PhD at the time and uh, typesetting the diagrams for my, P my PhD thesis was very boring, so one of the things that I did was that I created uh, a little language for typesetting the diagrams for me. Uh, it was called dead, dead Not because initially it only uh, generated diagrams for natural deduction and then it had several versions. Uh, this are the slides for my presentation about Dead Not 6. And Dead Not 6 is an extensible semi preprocessor for Lua LaTeX that understands diagrams in ASCII art in the sense that uh, <clears throat> when I have a, a, a tech file that has this, and when the NAT6 is loaded, uh, when I give the right comments, the NAT6 interprets this block here as something that defines this diagram. Oops, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> it interprets this diagram here, this, this diagram in the comments here, as something that defines a diagram called foo, a deduction called foo, and uh, it generates this code here so that we can uh, just uh, invoke the, the, the definition of the deduction by, by typing backslash dead foo. And uh, then that 6 also supports uh, another language for typesetting by dimension of diagrams uh, with arrows and stuff for category theory and blah blah. Uh, it's the specifications of these diagrams look like this. Uh, here is a sorry. Here is a very good example. This is a huge diagram. Sorry, one second. So the source code that generates this diagram here is just this thing at the left. Uh, so it's very visual. We can type set the diagram in ASCII art here, and then in this part here, we tell uh, how the nodes are to be joined, uh, which arrows have to, to have annotations, and so on. And this language is extensible in the sense that, uh, where is that? Uh, <clears throat> here, uh, comments that start with percent colon uh, are interpreted as definitions for three diagrams. Uh, lines that start with, with percent uh, uppercase D uh, define uh, 2D diagrams with arrows and stuff. And lines that start with, with comment uppercase L contain blocks of Lua code that we can use to extend the, the interpreter on the fly. Anyway, uh, here are some recent examples of diagrams that I uh, used that I six, did not seek to type set. Uh, this diagram here uh, was generated by this specification here. Uh, <coughs> and this diagram here with the curved arrows was generated by this specification here. Uh, so uh, the dot six was very easy to extend. At, at some point, I started to to use it to generate diagrams using picked tree, uh, mainly for the classes that I give the, at the university. I teach mathematics in a, whatever, in a bad place, whatever. Um, <clears throat> uh, let me show an. An animation 
Here is a diagram that I generated with the Net6, and it is a flipbook animation. Like we type uh, page up and page down, and we go to the next page of the book and to the previous page of the book. And here is the source code that generates that. Uh, this source code is not very visual, so it's uh, quite clumsy to, to edit a diagram directly in the tag file like that. Uh, these diagrams were inspired by uh, something called my name that, uh, oh, I've forgotten the name of the guy, but it's a guy that makes many videos about mathematics and he created this library called my name for generating his animations. Uh, uh, other people adapted his library to, to make them, to make it more, make it more accessible. Uh, I tried to learn it, but uh, each animation, even with even an animation that very few frames, each animation took ages to render, so uh, it wasn't fun. And animations and PDFs can be rendered in seconds. So uh, these things were fun for me because my laptop is very, very slow and my name was not fun. Uh, uh, anyway, writing code like this uh, inside the uh, attack file was not very fun because it, it was uh, hard to debug. So in uh, 2022 I started to play with ways of, of uh, generating these diagrams from, from REPLs and I found a way for Picture-E and a way for Tix. Uh, each one of these ways became, became a video. Uh, if you uh, go to the list of, fir of first class videos of EV, you're going to see that there's a video about picture E here and a video about ticks. Uh, <coughs> here you have some, some information like length and explanation, etc. And here are the pages for these videos. Uh, my page about the video about picture E is like this, it has some diagrams whatever, and this one is much, is much nicer, and uh, a lot of people watched, it, watched it, that video, I mean, I thought that 250 people watched it, so for me that's, uh, that's a, a million of people. Uh, and this video is about how to extract diagrams from the manual, uh, from the text manual, and how to run those, those uh, examples in a REPL and modify them bit by bit. And this is a, a screenshot. But let me go back. Uh, at that point, the, the, these things were just prototypes. The code was not very nice. And in this year, I wrote, uh, I was able to unify those uh, two ways of generating PDFs, the one for ticks and the one for picture E, and I unified them with many other uh, things that generated diagrams. Uh, the basis of these things is something called uh, showchu.lua. I'm not going to, to, to show its details now, but uh, is ext <coughs> its extension that generates ticks code is just this. So we can uh, specify a diagram with just a path or just a block like this, and then uh, if we run uh, show zero zero and it returns a string that is just the body of the the inner body of the tag file. If we run this, we see the whole tag file, and if we run this, we save the tag file and and we uh, compile the tag file to generate the PDF. And if we run this, we show the PDF in the lower right window. And that's the same thing for all my recent programs that generate PDFs. They are all integrated. Uh, here is the one that uh, the basis for all my modules that generate diagrams with picture E. Uh, its demos are not very interesting, so let me show some demos of extensions that do interesting things. Uh, so this is a diagram that I created by editing it in a repo. Uh, I create several picked objects here. Uh, and if I execute this, it compiles the object, generates a PDF, 
And if I tap this, here is the, the, the PDF. And if I just uh, ask Lua to display what is books here, uh, it shows the the source code in picture E of the of the diagram, and the nice thing is that it is indented, so uh, it's easy to debug the the picture E code. Uh, if anyone is interesting, uh, the module that does the the tricks for indentation is very easy to understand. It has uh, lots of tests and test blocks, and I think that that its the data structures are easy to understand. Uh, anyway, here is another example. The show is here. It generates a 3D, 3D diagram. Uh, now let me talk about uh, parsers and uh, repos in a very strange place. Uh, I mean, using repos to build parsers step by step, step by step, and replacing uh, parts by more complex parts. Uh, <clears throat> so I said that Lua is very min minimalistic, uh, and everybody knows that implementation of implementations of regular expressions are big and complex. So instead of coming with uh, full regular expressions, Lua comes with something called patterns and uh, a, a library function called string.match. Uh, here is a, <coughs> a copy of the part of the manual that explains the syntax of a part of the syntax of, pat of patterns. Uh, <coughs> here's how string.match is described in the, in the manual. Uh, it's just this looks for the first match of pattern in the string S, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> and then we have to go to the other section of the manual that explains patterns. <coughs> uh, Lua patterns are so simple, uh, so so limited, that they, they don't even have the, the alternation operator. Uh, here is how it is described in the uh, ELISP manual. Uh, backslash uh, pipe uh, specifies an alternative, blah, blah, blah. Uh, <clears throat> when we want to, to build more complex uh, regular expressions, uh, patterns, grammars, etc., we have to use an, uh, an external library for that. Uh, no, sorry, a library that, that is external, but, but that was written by one of the authors of Lua itself. Uh, this a uh, library is called LPEG, and its manual says LPEG is a new pattern matching library for Lua based on parsing expression grammars, pegs. Uh, the manual is very terse. Uh, I found it incredibly hard to read. Uh, it doesn't have any diagrams. It has some, some examples, though. Uh, and the Lua wiki has a big page called LPEG Tutorial with lots of examples. But it, it also doesn't have diagrams and I found some things incredibly hard to understand. For example, this is something that is in the, in the manual of LPEG that uh, I saw and I thought, wow, great, this makes all sense and this is going to be very useful. It's a way to, to build grammars. Uh, that can be recursive, and they, they sort of can encode uh, BNF grammars. We just have to translate the BNF a bit to get rid of some, of some recursions and to translate them to something else. And the manual also has some things that I thought, oh no, I don't have any idea of what this thing does. And in fact, I, I saw these things for, for the first time more than 10 years ago, and they only started to make sense uh, Ago. Uh, one example is group captures. Uh, LPEG also comes with a module called the RE module. Uh, let me pronounce it in Portuguese, the RE module. Uh, and the, its manual says the RE module provided by the file repo.lua in the distribution supports a somewhat conventional re uh, regular expression syntax for. Pattern, usage, pattern use, usage within LPEG. 
And this is a quick reference. Uh, and it, this thing is very brief. It has some nice examples, but it's hard to understand in a way. Uh, <clears throat> and here are some comments about my attempts to, to learn uh, here.lua. Uh, this is a class. In this case, it's a very small class. Uh, and this file implements a PM method. Uh, I'm going to show examples of other PM methods very soon. Uh, so this is a PM method for here.lua that lets us compare the syntax of Lua patterns, LPEG, and here. Uh, see this example here. So if you run this, uh, it loads my my version of LPEG. Uh, no, sorry, my version of LPEG Rex. Uh, and it shows that when we apply the PM method to this Lua pattern, this LPEG pattern, and this uh, Re pattern, uh, they all give the same results. So we can use this thing, this kind of thing here, to show how to translate from uh, Lua patterns that are familiar because they are similar to regular expressions, only weaker, uh, to LPEG that is super weird, and to Re that is not so weird. Anyway, uh, the comment says that. Uh, in 2012, I had a project that needed a precedent pa precedence parser that could uh, parse arithmetical expressions with the right precedences. Uh, and at, at that point, I was still struggling with pure LPEG and, and I couldn't do much with it. So I tried to learn here.lu instead. And I wrote this old class here uh, that allowed me to use a preprocessor on patterns for Lua. And the thing is that with this preprocessor, I could spe I could specify precedence grammars using this thing here that worked, but it was super clumsy. Uh, and I gave up after a few attempts. And in 2022, I heard about something called LPEG Rex that was an expan uh, uh, an ex a kind of extension of Ohaya. And it was much more powerful than Lua, but after a while I realized that it had the same defects of, as Lua. And let me explain that because uh, it, says all, it has all to do with the things about black boxes and magic that I told in the beginning. Uh, both, I mean, sorry, neither Lua or LPEG Rex had some features that I needed. Uh, they didn't let us explain, sorry, they received a pattern that was specified as a string and it converted that into an LPEG pattern, but it didn't let us explore the, the LPEG patterns that they generated. Uh, the, their code was written in a way that was REPL unfriendly. I couldn't modify parts of the, of the code bit by bit in a REPL and, and try to change the code in a, without changing the original file, say. Uh, the code was very hard to explore, to hack, and to extend, in my opinion. The documentation was not very clear. And I sent a wonderful messages to the, the developer of LPEG Rex, and it wasn't, he was too busy to help me. He answered very briefly, and uh, to be honest, I felt rejected. I felt that I wasn't doing anything interesting, whatever, whatever. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, in 2022, I was trying to learn LPEG Rex because I, I was thinking that it would solve my problems, but it didn't. It didn't have the features that I needed, and it was hard to extend and how to uh, explore and hard to debug. And I decided to rewrite it uh, in a more hacker-friendly way, in the sense that uh, it was modular and I could replace any part of the module from a REPL. And my version of it was called lpeg onelua uh, And I decided that uh, in my version I wouldn't have the part, the part that receives uh, a grammar specified as a string and converts that to lpeg. 
I will just have the backend part that are the functions in LPEG that lets us let us uh, specify power programmers. Uh, so let me go back. Uh, let me explain a bit about LPEG. Lua has coercion. <coughs> The plus expects to receive true numbers. If one of its arguments or, or both of them are strings, it converts the string, the strings to numbers. So in this case here, true plus uh, string three returns the number five. And this is the concatenation operator. Uh, it expects to receive strings. Uh, so in this case, it will convert the number true to the string true and uh, the concatenation of these two things will be 23. Oops, sorry, 23 as a string. LPEG also has some coercions. Uh, I usually set these globals uh, to let me write my grammars very in a very uh, compact way. So instead of LPEG.p, LPEG.c, etc., I use these globals like uh, uppercase B, uppercase C, and so on. And with these globals, I can write things like this. C1 uh, times uh, string underscore. And uh, LPEG knows that LPEG.C, uh, sorry, it, uh, it sort of expands this to LPEG.C, uh, but LPEG-C expects to receive an LPEG pattern, and one is not yet an LPEG pattern, so it is coerced into an LPEG pattern by, cal by calling LPEG.P. So this short thing here becomes equivalent to <coughs> LPEG.C, LPEG.P1. And uh, the multiplication, when at least one of its arguments is an LPEG pattern, it expects to receive true LPEG patterns. And in this case, the, the one at the right is just a string, so it is coerced to an LPEG pattern by using LPEG.p. Uh, with this idea, we can sort of understand this comparison here. I mean, let me run it again. This first part is very similar to a regular expression here at the left. And when we apply this uh, LPEG sorry, this uh, Lua pattern to this subject here, uh, the result is uh, this thing here, this thing, this thing, and this thing. I'm going to, to call each one of these results captures. So each of these things uh, between parentheses captures a, a substring of the original string, and the, these captured substrings are returned in a certain order. Here is how to express the same thing in LPEG. Uh, it's very cryptic, but it's a good way to understand the, some basic operators of LPEG. I mean, we can look at the, in, at the menu and understand what C, S, and R do, and also uh, expan uh, exponentiation. And this strange thing here receives this, this string here, runs a function that I have defined that converts it to a, an object of a certain class, and that class represents uh, he patterns. So this thing is treated uh, as a pattern for he.lua, and it is matched against the string, and it returns the same thing as the, the other one. Uh, also, this thing here also has a comparison with LPEG regs, but these patterns are very, very trivial. They don't know, don't do anything very strange. So let's go back and see what kinds of very strange things there are. Uh, here is the the page of LPEG regs at GitHub. Here is the documentation. Uh, it's relatively brief. It it's explains uh, LPEG Rex as being an extension of Lua. So it explains that mainly the additional features. Here is a quick reference that explains only the additional features. Uh, some of the these strings I was of these things I was able to understand by uh, 
struggling a lot and some I wasn't able to even by spending several evening evenings trying to, to build examples uh, <coughs> and this is something very nice LPAC Rex comes with some example parsers and here is a parser that parses the Lua grammar I mean this is the, the grammar of for Lua 5.4 at the end of the the reference manual it's just this and this is in a kind of BNF and this is the BNF translated to uh, the language of uh, LPEG regs so this thing uses many constructions that are in Lua and some extra constructions that are described here and with these examples I was able to to understand some of the of these things here that has, that are described here in the quick reference but not all uh, <clears throat> so I wasn't able to, to use uh, LPEG uh, Rex by itself because some things didn't make much much sense and I decided to re-implement it in my own style uh, because that would be a way to map, at, at the very least, map what I understood and what I didn't, and learn one feature at a time, do comparisons, and so on. Uh, here, I pointed to two features of LPEG. One, I said, oh, great, this thing can be used to, to define grammars, even recursive grammars, and so on. And this is an oh-no feature one thing that didn't make any sense at all group captures uh one thing that i did to understand group captures was to represent them as diagrams of course I, in the beginning i was drawing these diagrams by hand but then i i realized that i could use the the bits of lpeg that i already knew to build a grammar that would parse a little language and generate these diagrams in LaTeX and I was able to make this uh, in this diagram here this thing uh, this thing above the, the arrow is a uh, Lua code a, Lua co a piece of Lua code that specifies an, an LPEG pattern this thing here at the top is the string that is being matched and the things be be below the under braces are the captures that each thing, uh, sorry, each thing captures. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, for example, this under brace here corresponds to this pattern here that passes a single character but doesn't return any captures. This thing here passes a single B and doesn't re re return any captures. This thing here passes a single character and captures it. And this thing here passes a, a, the character D and captures it. And this other thing here uh, that transforms this pattern into another pattern uh, returns first uh, a capture with all the string that was passed by this pattern here and then all the captures returned by the, this thing here before the column. So this was a way to, to uh, build concrete examples for things that the LPAG manual was explaining in a very terse way, and it worked for me. Some things that, were, some things that were very mysterious started to make sense, and I started to, to have intelligent questions to ask in the mailing list. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, with that, I was able to, to understand what are group captures and uh, group, cap group captures that receive a name. Uh, well, let me explain what this does. This thing here captures, uh, sorry, parses the empty string and returns this, this as a constant. So uh, this is something that doesn't, have, doesn't exist in regular expressions. Uh, it passes nothing and re returns this as a capture. Then this thing here returns two, uh, these two constants here and passes the empty string. And this thing here, D, converts the results of this thing here into a group capture 
and stores it in the label D. Uh, and then here's another constant capture. And I realized that these things, these things here were similar to how Lua specifies building lists. Uh, uh, when we build, uh, sorry, table, when we build a table and we say that the first element of the table is here, this element is put at the end of the table. When after that we say d equal to, equals to say 42, we are putting the 42 in the, the slot whose key is D. Uh, this was happening with LPAG captures, but there was something very strange. Uh, these uh, group captures could hold more than one capture, more, more than one value. So there was something uh, between lists and tables. I started to use this notation to... to uh, explain in my notation what they were doing. Uh, many things start things started to make sense. Many mysterious senses, sentences in the manual started to make sense, but some didn't. Uh, but at least I was able to uh, send some intelligent questions to the mailing list, and the author of Lua in LPEG answered some of them. Uh, he was not very happy about my questions. He uh, uh, told me that uh, those diagrams were a waste of time, the, the manual was perfectly clear, and so on, uh, whatever. But, uh, but I was able to... <laughs> so it was weird, but, uh, but I was able to, to understand lots of things from, from his answers. Uh, so, <laughs> this is a copy of one of my messages, then there's another one, another one, some of the, 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 the diagrams, then he complained about, about this diag these diagrams, he said that these things here uh, that look like table constructions do not exist, and uh, whatever. Uh, anyway, once I understood group, uh, group captures, Many features were very, very easy to understand. I was, and I started to be able to use LPAG to, to build some very interesting things. Uh, I was able to reproduce some of, of the features that I saw in LPAG Rex. Uh, remember that this, uh, where is that? This is a syntax of Lua. Here. Uh, I was able to understand uh, how these things here were translated to LPEG code, to LPEG patterns, by using group captures in a certain way. Uh, I was able to implement them in LPEG1.lua. And after some time, I was able to use uh, LPEG1.lua to build grammars that would, were able to parse uh, arithmetical expressions with the right precedence. And here's an example in which I built the grammar step by step and I uh, test the current grammar and I replace a bit and then I test the new grammar and so on. And you can see that the result is always a tree that is uh, drawn in a nice two-dimensional way. Uh, at this point, uh, these uh, powers here are returned as a, as a list, as, as an operation pow with uh, several arguments here. And then I apply uh, a kind of passing combinator here that transforms these trees into other trees. And with these uh, combinators here, I can uh, specify that the power is associative in a certain direction. Uh, the, the, the division is associative in another direction, the minus is associative, uh, uh, uses the same direction as a division, and so on, and they have the right precedences. Uh, so here are the tests. Uh, so here's my file lpeg.lua. It has several classes. Uh, each class has tests after, after it. Uh, I was able to implement something that uh, LPEG Rex has that's called keywords. That's very useful for parsing 
uh, problems in programming languages. I was able to, to implement something similar to, to the debugger that to the pack debugger that Alpag uses, but I uh, I was frustrated by some limitations of the of that debugger and I implemented my own that is uh, much better and. <coughs> Uh, let me show something else. I was able to translate a good part of of the Lua parser here to lpeg one Lua. I haven't finished yet, but uh, I have most of the tra the translation here. Uh, and after having all that, I was able to 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 build other grammars very quickly. Uh, writing new new parses became finally became fun, and here's one example that I I showed in the beginning. Uh, <clears throat> if I remember correctly, uh, I took a figure from the uh, from the Wikipedia. I don't have its link now, but I uh, specify a grammar that that parses. Uh, exactly the example that appears in the Wikipedia. So with my grammar, uh, considering that the top level uh, entry is statement, when I parse this string here, the result is this tree. And I can do some operations on that. I can define how this thing is, is to be converted into LaTeX. Uh, I can define other operations that convert trees into other trees. And here are some tests of these operations. This is what I showed in the beginning. I'm not going to explain all the details of, of this thing now. Uh, this show converts this thing into attack in the way specified by these instructions here. That says that, uh, well, whatever, no, the, no, really, whatever. Uh, <clears throat> and here's the result, the LaTeX result. Uh, and the, <clears throat> these diagrams here are generated by this uh, file here that defines a simple grammar that parses this thing, this thing here, and then LaTeX it in a certain way, and then and also tests to check if the if this code here that is Lua code that generates an, an LPEG grammar uh, parses this subject here and returns the expected result. Uh, so this is the code that I wanted to show. Uh, I wanted to show many more things, but I wasn't able to prepare them before the conference. And I hope that uh, soon, for some value of soon, I'll be able to create REPL-based tutorials for LPEG, HE and LPEG Bonded Lua, where LPEG is something very famous. HE is a module of LPEG. Uh, I could also do something like this for uh, LPEG Rex and LPEG.1.lua dot uh, dot is the thing that I wrote, the one that uh, has tests in comments and the tests usually generate trees and sometimes they generate tag code. Uh, yeah, so that's it. I wanted to present much more, but I wasn't able to prepare it. So sorry. Thanks. Bye.